Hello and welcome to SA Weekender. Spring is one of my favourite times to visit the Barossa because it's when the fields of canola light up. And speaking of being aflame, wait till you see where I'm taking you a little bit later today. But first, let's see what else is on the show. Ready, we spend a day at the races and join in the fun at one of SA's most popular country race meets. Get your mates out here and have a go. It's, it's a not ripper of a day, guys. Ripper of a day. And we're rolling on the river for a relaxing getaway. But first, here's Briny. This piece of Adelaide Hills bushland is where conservation history was made. Warrawong Sanctuary was the flagship in the fight to save endangered species. But sadly, it closed about five years ago. Now it's ready for a new chapter. Narelle McPherson and David Cobbold are the couple hoping to put some new bounce into the Mylor site, which reopened in September. They've still got some serious work to do, but luckily they have some help. For more than a year, a bunch of volunteers have been taking up the tools to help repair or replace, well, pretty much everything. So give me a bit of a list of the tasks that you have been going through in the past year. How long is this program? <laughs> You've got three minutes. <laughs> it, it's death by a thousand cuts, but hopefully not the death. Uh, like a thousand cuts, I actually think Narelle and I can withstand. But you know, even have a look around here, it's like forget-me-nots, scotch thistles, African daisies, uh, and really that's just the outside. You know, the inside of the buildings needs just as much work. The sanctuary was founded in 1969 by Dr John Wamsley, who rehabilitated dairy pasture to native habitat, gaining accolades for his ambitious conservation efforts and feral-proof fencing, and notoriety for his catskin hat. Gradually, feral species were evicted and the sanctuary expanded. Quolls and betongs flourished, with the elusive platypus one of the biggest draw cards. But financial success eluded the enterprise, and after several ownership changes, the sanctuary was closed in 2013, and much of the land sold off. David Norell previously ran Peel Zoo in Western Australia, which offers all sorts of hands-on experiences. And Dave says they're not attempting to recreate a replica of Dr Wamsley's creation. I guess if we were to put our stamp on the sanctuary, it's going to come back to edutainment. Like, we want people to have fun, we want them to fall in love with Australian animals, and from there, they will naturally just start caring about the environment. The sanctuary currently has some marsupials in enclosures, but as for how many wallabies, bandicoots and potteroos are still making their home out in Warrawong's open scrub, Dave says a full audit needs to be conducted. We got the ball rolling with a koala. Oh, look, there we go. Yeah. Oh, that was a good old snooze up there. And it seems some of the elusive platypus might still be around too. In Blackwater Lake, the most that we've seen on the surface at any one time is four. So, so they seem to be perfectly happy in breeding down there. Uh, but obviously, like there's a dry creek bed behind us. Uh, we really want to reinvigorate and establish the wetlands so that there's an entire system, uh, because really what we're doing is creating more habitat. If you feel like a wander amongst the redneck wallabies or a spot of bird watching, you'll find Warrawong on Stock Road near Mylor, bit over half an hour from the city. Check for opening times and tailored experiences on their website. And who knows, you might even find yourself volunteering to help Warrawong write a brand new story on conservation. Coming up, a relaxing river getaway. <laughs> With its rich history and incredible natural beauty, the Murray River has long been a South Australian holiday favourite. To really discover the wonders of the River Murray, I am about to board the Proud Mary for a boutique overnight stay. Casting off from Murray Bridge, just an hour's drive from Adelaide, I can already feel my cares drift away. Is the mouth of Reed Creek Gorge, or also known as the Manor Waterfalls. 
With an intimate knowledge of the area, Captain John Heritage thinks he's got the best job in the world. How long have you been captain for, John? Uh, roughly about uh, 16 months now. Okay. Yeah. And what yep. do you love about it? The lifestyle, the sunrises, the sunsets that happen along the Murray. The peacefulness, the beauty of it, you know, every day is a different day. Towering sandstone cliffs, beautiful sandy beaches and red river gums create a breathtaking corridor as the proud Mary glides by. And with over 300 species of birds in the region, don't forget to pack your binoculars and camera. The river is always picturesque, guaranteed a good photo. While you're welcome to just sit on deck and watch the world go by, there are also plenty of activities to choose from. Explore the river's secluded lagoons and inlets. Take a guided nature walk or explore ancient Aboriginal sites. As for the food, resident chefs create culinary masterpieces using seasonal SA produce. From buffets and fixed menu selections to a special silver service captain's dinner, you'll be spoiled for choice. At night, you can't beat a bush barbie and live entertainment. When it's time to rest, the Proud Mary has 18 cabins that have recently been refurbished. Beautifully decorated with your own private ensuite, you'll have everything you need to relax in comfort. Unlike some of the mega cruise ships of today, the award-winning Proud Mary never feels crowded, but intimate and welcoming. They even offer a door-to-door -door service. We have 36 passengers on board for our two and five day cruises. Whether it's a progress group or a time of village, everyone's different and that's, uh, that's a big part of the job, meeting new people as well. It's a nice so, yeah. life you're living. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Pretty good office to work. Life moves so fast sometimes, but staying on the Proud Mary, you will have all the time in the world to savour the sights, sounds and flavours of the River Murray. The Proud Mary is having a special sale just for our SA Weekend viewers. Choose from either two, five or seven night cruises departing November, December or January. All meals, excursions and entertainment are included. Check their website for more details or just give them a call. Be quick, this offer will only last for the next five days. After the break, I try my hand at an age-old tradition. I'd be lying if I said I'm not a little bit scared. It's hard to do any job without the right tools. And naturally, as a cook, you need a good knife. But what if you don't just want any knife, but a custom-made, hand-forged piece of steel that you'll love forever? Well, Gardener Knives is the place to come. Full of unique metal decor and machinery, this workshop located at the Jam Factory precinct at Sepulsfield Winery feels like a movie set. But knife maker Barry Gardner is the real deal. The first time he saw a handmade knife 30 years ago, he was hooked. And now his passion is his profession. I hear around the traps they call you asbestos hands. <laughs> What, what do they mean by that? Because what kind of temperatures are we talking with when you need required um, to make a knife? Well, to do forging, we uh, need about 2,100 degrees. And I guess I've been doing it that long now that I can, I can take a fair bit of heat. As well as taking custom orders, Baz holds workshops, and today he's going to teach me this age-old skill. For the blade, we're using his steel of choice, Damascus. Instead of being one piece, it has different layers folded together, so the end result will be beautiful wavy lines like these. Now, usually I'm talking like 180 degrees fan force in my kind of kitchen. In Baz's kitchen, this is 2,000 degrees, so I'd be lying if I said I'm not a little bit scared. And so, the heat is on. You want to spend the least amount of time as you can in front of the forge, so you go in, grab it, get it to there, and lift it out. Yeah, you've well. got to place, and place it in nice and gently. 
just like that so you're not ripping the floor up. Okay. First, I get the billet nice and toasty. Next, a little gentle coaxing will help form it into one piece. Stand a little bit closer. That's it. And finally, take it out and cool it down. It can take Barry anywhere from half a day to a week to make a knife. And pretty much any metal can be used. Recently, a client brought in her granddad's old shotgun from 1910. How did someone like that react when you, you make a knife out of something that's so personal to her and her family? Uh, well, that lady actually burst into tears. Um, we're getting quite a few people now uh, asking the same question. You know, I've got um, granddad's saw blades or something like that. Can we make something out of it that we can always cherish? And, you know, as long as we can give it a go, we'll do it. Regularly getting orders from all over the world, he's even made one for Prince Charles and Camilla. Lovely people. The state government got us to make a knife for them. They seem generally interested in what we're doing. And what do they think of your knife? They love it, of course. <laughs> in these days of mass manufacturing, there's something really special about someone who puts time, heart and soul into their craft. I've always thought that whenever I've made a knife for a customer, a part of me has gone with it because I like to think that I put love and thought and my own energy into it. Who knows, maybe it creates something special, I'm, I'm not too sure. If you want to order a custom knife or brave a workshop at Gardener Knives, just call or check out their website for details. Either way you slice it, you'll have something unique you'll treasure for generations. Next, the country cup that brings people together. Today, I've come up here to the Balaclava Cup. There really is something special about our country race meets. So today, I've decided to join thousands of race goers for a huge day of fun, fashion, racing, and food and wine. So, let's get amongst it. The big city races might get all the attention, but on any given month in South Australia, numerous country race meets are happening all over the state. They're the lifeblood of the racing community. This popular hump day event is one of the oldest and most successful country race meets in SA, attracting up to 10,000 punters. The club was formed in 1903, first race meeting in 1904. So uh, it's been around a while. It's been run continually except for one year for a break for the Second World War. It has had different names, but it is essentially the cup. There's no doubt about it, the Balaclava Cup attracts a mixed bag. From mad punters, salt of the earth locals, to city people attending their very first race meet, all rubbing shoulders with trainers, jockeys, owners and breeders, like Sam Hayes, who sadly is no relation. Well, it's a sport that we love. It's a, uh, a business that we've been involved in with now for three generations. So our family business was started by my grandfather, Colin Hayes. We love coming out to the races. Um, we breed these horses and some of the family train them and to see them here on race day is part of the excitement. There's nine races on the bill with apprentice jockey of the year, Raquel Clark, riding in five of them. So far, she's jagged a first and a second and is hoping to go all the way in the cup. I have Pretty Punk in the main race for my boss and she goes really well, so if she brings her best foot forward, um, she'll sure be in the winning circle. What do you love most about your job? Uh, the horses. Yeah, they're a beautiful animal to work with and um, they make every day a good day. Trainer Leon McDonald is Raquel's boss and knows only too well the hours of hard work that goes into preparing a potential champion. Well, it takes uh, a fair while, probably about 10 to 12 weeks from the time they start working to the time they race. A lot of times their first preparation is not always their best, so maybe another spell and start again, but, uh, you know, it, it does take a while. So, mate, all the best today, and hopefully you get another winner in the main one. OK, thanks very much. Well, I've chatted with the trainer and the jockey, so with that bit of intel, I reckon it's time to have a punt. We're at the races, so you've got to have a bet. I'm going to be honest with you, though, I have no idea what I'm doing. I even studied this thing, the form guide, and it's like it's in a different language. Go, G'day, mate. sir, how are we going? All right, Andrew, all That's the best. The way. Thank you, what mate. What would you like, sir? Um, I'm hearing good things about pretty, pretty punk. Pretty punk. But I don't know what I'm doing, so I've got $20. How do I spend it wisely? 
Take it each way, I reckon. Each way? Take it each way. All right, you're the boss. Head on the cut, can win and place on the two. Thank yeah. you, sir. This is the ticket. I've got a feeling. <laughs> Fingers crossed. And while we wait for the big race, it's time to do a bit of mingling. What's the vibe like? It's amazing. Like, you see a lot of people that you don't see throughout the year, and this is just like a yearly catch up. You meet everyone from Adelaide to the Riverland, York Peninsula, so you catch up with everyone here. The weather's perfect, the atmosphere's yeah. great. Just get your mates out here and have a go. It's, it's a not ripper too of a day, guys. Ripper of a day. Yeah, not too far out of Adelaide. Yeah. Genuine it's, fun. It's awesome. So what's it going to be like in about two hours' time? Are we uh, here? messy, <laughs> yes. Uh, are you a betting man and how have you gone today? I'm not a betting man normally, so I take everyone else's tips and uh, so far I'm uh, zero from six, so I'm, uh, I'm not going too well. Hopefully I have a bit more luck. Looks like it's race time. Good luck, Raquel, and pretty punk. Go, you good thing. There it is, racing. Inside the 100, special diva. Coming back, Thomas Valor. Georgina Cartwright's won the sprint and cup on cup day. I don't know who won, but it definitely wasn't me. And in a photo finish for second and third place, it's Tatush, followed by Special Diva. Oh. We didn't wear anything. But to be honest, spend a day at the country races and you're already on to a winner, even if the results on the track don't quite go your way. Head to the Thoroughbred Racing SA website to find a country meet near you, or mark September in your diary for next year's Balaclava Cup. It really is a great day out. Well, that's all we've got time for today. I hope we've shone a light on just some of the wonderful things you can see and do all around our great state. Here's what we've got for you next time. Ron tackles a spectacular circuit in the mid-north and we preview this year's colourful Oz Asia Festival. Until then, make sure you keep in touch with us via social media. You can even send us a photo of one of your favourite South Australian locations, just like this one. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.